So how should I change this machine instead of just doing this? This doesn't work. Just copying the machine over doesn't work. Can you tack something on the part of the machine that you know accepts x so that only x could get through the machine? Sure. Sure, I can try to do that. So what should I do precisely? You're saying I should take this algorithm. Think of this as a program. If you don't like Turing machines because it confuses your way of thinking, just think of M as a program. Somebody gives you a program, and they give you an input to your program. So, so Michael's suggesting that the first line of my program, I, check for, I change the machine to check for x. And if it's x, I just say yes. No, if it's x, you keep going. If it's x, I run the machine. Right. And if it's not x, and if it's not x what do I do? I just reject. reject. Mm -hmm. I could certainly throw that if statement in. I could throw it in right at the beginning of the program. If the input to this program is x, then, then run the program. Then continue with whatever was there before. Otherwise, skip the whole program, go to the end, and say print no. Does everyone understand Michael's suggestion? Now, uh, he's obviously got some idea of why he wants to do this. But let's check if it helps us at all. So let me, we'll call this new machine m. M from Michael's machine. And let's remind everybody what this machine is relative to capital M. This machine is the same machine as capital M except for the following addition. It has an if statement at the top that says, if the input to me is equal to the string x, then actually continue in the program. Otherwise, skip to the bottom and print reject. It's different than this machine. This machine actually goes ahead and runs itself on any input you give it. This machine does exactly what this machine does, but only if it's given the input x. Otherwise, it always says no. So this machine is going to do what? What's the possible acceptances that this machine might do? X. Well, either it's going to accept x, or if you give it anything except x, it's just going to reject. It's going to accept nothing. So we don't know exactly which one this is going to do. It might not accept anything. <laughs> It might not accept x either. But if it's going to accept anything, the only thing it has a chance to accept is x, because that's what it does at the first line. It says, if the input's x, then go ahead and run the machine. Otherwise, skip to the end and reject. So the only possible languages for m sub little m are the empty set and the single string x itself. So it seems like it's a good idea, because at least that puts us in the realm of the empty set still tells us that the answer is no to this question. But if it's not the empty set, the only possible thing that could possibly be here is just a single string. So we get the answer from this empty question to the question of whether m accepts x. Here's what it looks like. If the input equals x, then run m as usual. Else print reject. That's what mm does. So if I want to figure out, somebody gives me a machine and an input string. I want to figure out if this machine accepts this input string. Here's what I do. I take the machine, I put in this if statement at the beginning, and I give it to you guys, and I ask you, does this machine accept something, or does it accept absolutely nothing? That's my strategy. Right, so let's go through the possibilities. I give this machine to you, and you tell me that this machine accepts something. So what is this machine possibly going to be accepted? This machine rejects everything except possibly the input x. That's the only thing it ever runs on. So if you tell me the machine accepts something, what's the only thing it could be accepting? x. So if you say the machine is not empty, that it accepts something, then I know for sure that my original machine accepts x, because if this machine accepts something, the only thing it could accept was x. And when it accepts x, it's running m on the x. So I know that m accepts x. But if you tell me that this machine I give you, this m sub m, is empty, that means it rejects everything. It already rejects everything except x. But if it rejects everything completely, then it's also rejecting the input x, which means that the answer to this question is no. That part worked before. But the part that works right now is the part that when it accepts something, it's got to accept x. And the trick is just focusing on the input that's x. It really does seem like a trick. It's a trick. It does, it does quite seem 
It is kosher, but it's a trick. It's a kosher trick. It's easy to make a finite state machine at the beginning of your turning machine that just <coughs> runs through X and goes to a dead state. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, you, you shouldn't really doubt that I can do this. I could do this. You give me a program. I'll go in there in my Emacs and type in, you know, if the input is X, because I'm given the M, I'm given the X. I copy the machine over. I copy the X over to this if statement, and I say if input is X, then continue and run the program on X. Otherwise, just go to the end and say reject. <coughs> it's a trick because this problem is really no easier than this. This is just darn hard, and if you can do it, you can do anything. Okay, so here's the big picture one more time. Somebody gives me M and X. I convert it by a reduction to this new machine. Here's the new machine. And here's the truth. The new machine, MM, accepts the empty set if and only if M does not accept X. These two things are equivalent. So when I get an answer from you about whether this machine accepts the empty set or not, then I've got an answer to my original question. If you say it accepts the empty set and that's nothing, then I know my original machine doesn't accept x. And if you tell me it accepts something, then I know my original machine accepts specifically x. And that's the answer, yes. So if you got a way to do this, I can do this. And I got no way to do this, so you don't have any way to do this either. All right, questions about this? We're going to do one more trick like this that might not be quite as tricky. It'll take a little bit more of an effort to come up with the transformation. And then you'll see that there's really something very similar between all these tricks. They're all really much the same. And that's where Rice's theorem comes from. And I'll just tell you what that theorem is before we're done. And then we'll shift over to some other kinds of reductions. All right, questions? All right, so before I do the next one, let me do something maybe a little bit simpler in between. We know now that, uh, that there's no way to determine whether a given Turing machine accepts absolutely nothing. What if I ask you this question? Uh, does a given Turing machine M accept a given regular set R? Question mark. So I give you two things now, a finite state machine and a Turing machine. And I'm wondering whether they happen to be the same language, whether this Turing machine accepts exactly the things that this particular finite state machine accepts. Right? If I give you two finite state machines and I'm wondering if they do the same thing, then the answer is, yeah, you can figure it out. You can minimize them, compare them. But if I give you a Turing machine and a finite state machine, maybe there's no way to know whether they do the same thing. Well, what if there was a way to know? What if you had a way to determine, given a finite state machine and a Turing machine, that they actually accepted the same language? What could you do if you had that method? Well, you could do this. You could solve this problem. How would you solve this problem if you could solve this problem? How could you figure out whether a given Turing machine accepted absolutely nothing if you could figure out whether a given Turing machine could accept any specific regular set? It is a regular set. Right, the empty set is a regular set. You just give a finite state machine that doesn't accept anything. And you hand that finite state machine over to here, and you let this person who can tell whether Turing machines accept particular regular sets tell you whether it's the same or not. And if you give this person a specific regular set, it'll work the same way. So this person checks whether M actually accepts the empty set. And that's just what you want to figure out here. So this is just a more general problem than this. And if this one's hard, then certainly the more general problem is hard. This is a reduction where all you do is say, let R equal the empty set. That's the whole reduction. You don't do anything else. You don't change M. You let M stay the same, and you let R equal something specific. It's a reduction by restriction. You're saying basically that the harder problem is just the special case of this problem that you're wondering about. So this kind of reduction comes up a lot, and it can be bewildering. You stare at it, you think, oh, gee, I don't know. How do you show that's undecidable? But really, it's kind of obviously undecidable because it's just harder than 